Oh, this will be a shit show. Yeah, this will be a shit show. Oh, um, is it off mute yet? Jesus Christ. YouTube. Ugh. Um, why? Why? There we go. Oh, fucking A. I've been trying to get some shit done today and it's just fucking, um, there is a tradition that if I start a stream with like low numbers, shit gets weird. Shit gets weird. Um, so yeah, I should just fucking swap over and play horizon at this rate. Not to sound ungrateful for those of you who are here, but <laughs> fucking right. Like fucking what are it, 10, 12 people, whatever fucking it's sitting at right now. Um, I should just play fucking horizon. Horizon fives out. I was playing some of it. Uh, and I have to take some chicken out of the oven in six minutes. Um, but, uh, just a desperately pretty game. Um, can't fucking play in the music though. All of the music is like DMCA music, uh, fucking Foo Fighters and shit like that. It's, it's the, the soundtrack to the, the, the game is fucking straight up copyright. Um, but, uh, mm, mm. um, yeah, it's a good game though. If you have Xbox game pass, fucking get, um, get horizon five. Uh, it's, it's a fun fucking game. The intro is brilliant. The intro to the game is brilliant. You feel like such a badass. You feel like such a badass. There's no fucking way around it. The intro to the game is amazing. Um, and if you do have a fucking rig, play it. It's desperately pretty. <clears throat> um, the newest one takes place in Mexico. It's it's gorgeous. Baja and uh, um, you fucking like what you break through a fucking rail and you just take air and you're you're literally going through Teotihuacan, the the pyramids. Um, it's dude, it it's a gorgeous game. Um, hey, Cricks. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan. I don't like driving games, but I like the, the, the Horizon, Forza Horizons. They're, they're fun as fuck. <laughs> Especially when you can just hit the rewind button. Oh, fucked up. Rewind. Right. I, I, I'm a big fan of that feature. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it fives out and it's, oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I like, I like um, driving around the countryside at night, especially if you get some rain by the ocean. Oh, it's... Get the fucking tunes blaring. <laughs> Can't find a name I like. <laughs> I appreciate that username. <laughs> I'm just getting fucking started here and talking about just fucking bullshit. Just bullshit. Um, but, yeah, I, I, um, I, like the, I like the Horizon series. Um, I just like blaring the fucking music and roaring the engine and zooming around corners and it's, it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, and they have some of those like proper racer features, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, <laughs> how many, how many passing goat herders are there in your neck of the woods? Cause, um, <clears throat> well, that's nice, Caboose. Um, oh, you got in a proper workout. Um, <laughs> uh, I got in a proper workout today too. Um, fucking abs, legs, and arms. Um. Got in a proper fucking workout. I'm sure my ankle will be sore to today, tomorrow, something like that. Um, I'm sure I'll pay for it in some way, shape, or form. I always do. This fucking body. I'm trying to get my hands on a compound and the whole fucking thing, but 
There's a there's a drug in trials right now that is topically proving to regrow small fiber nerves. Like it's it's working. They're using for diabetic peripheral neuropathy and um, HIV associated uh, neuropathy, and they're expanding to small fiber neuropathy. And it is the drug's never been okayed in the U.S. It's never been okayed in the U.S. The FDA has never cleared this drug, but this drug has years. Hey, small fiber neuropathy gang, what's up? Fucking it's brutal, isn't it? Um, the the FDA never approved the drug for any usage, but the drug has been all uh, been used um, around the world for a couple of decades now, like maybe even three. Um, and so it's got a long usage record as far as safety, but it's never been used in the U S. So it looks like the rest of the fucking world is going to get access to the drug before the U S does because the U S the FDA in the U S has to do the full fucking process. Perenzepine. Perenzepine is the drug. And again, not a doctor fucking, um, in chat, um, it's used traditionally for treatment of gastric ulcers. Yeah, that's that's what it was being used for. And you, um, there's a company called Winsantor that has been trialing it. They're at like stage two A, I think, in the U.S. Um, but they're gonna get to they're gonna get to market outside the U.S. first uh, because the FDA again, again, the FDA. Right. If you've got a fucking drug that'll kill 10,000 people tomorrow, don't worry. The FDA is probably got a board member who was on the board of directors for the company that's manufacturing that drug. But if you've got a drug that's got a three decade safety record and they just want to use for an alternative usage because it's proving uh, 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 proving useful for that. Uh, the FDA is like, hang on, hang on now. We're going to need a few years worth of fucking trials on this. Um, so, but, hey, I will be right back. Forgive me. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you think of it, Caboose? Oh. There's a growing neo-Nazi psychedelic scene. Okay, that's fucking words I didn't expect to see together. Um. Yep, Kaiser. Well. Chicken par cooked, um, uh, par cooked. Um, I'll 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 pan fry it when I wanna. Uh, hey Puka, uh, I'll pan fry it when I I wanna finish it um, after stream. But yeah, baked in the oven to set the crust, and afterwards. Yeah, see, Caboose, I don't like fish. I don't like fish. So, how did you have it? Um, <clears throat> how was it prepared for you? Or how did you prepare it? Um, oh, fuck. Oh, sorry. Yep, yeah, traps. Fucking. Oh, from curls. You broiled it. 
All right, fair enough. Uh, Chile impeached their president. Okay, I need to call her a passing coat herder. If it swims, I'll eat it. I don't like fish. I've never got. I've never enjoyed the taste. Uh, cupcake. That's what I would assume. That's what I would assume is that they're just they're just doing what the Nazis do with the psychedelica, but a cult. <clears throat> We're tapping into higher energies and going to use that to channel the fucking pure Aryan race, even though they're not fucking Aryans. <sighs> Whatever. Um, so, um, it cooks it nicely and it, um, hey, rumble. Um, so let's watch a video. Yeah. Um, let's, let's watch a video. Um, so, this is in Boston. This um, Sunday, this past Sunday, um, New Englanders don't fuck around, right? Like, okay, so Kaiser and I, oh, I'll preface this. You know, Kaiser and I, how we talk about like, you know, the Pacific Northwest and New England being the sort of bastion of this sort of like anarchist fucking leftist actions, Right? Like that they just don't fuck around. They don't fuck around. Um, some cops tried to arrest a anarchist protester in Boston. Well, um, is that necessary? Is that necessary? <clears throat> They de-arrested him. It's not necessary. <laughs> they, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, oh man, de-arrests turn me on. Dude, yeah, they, the cop, two cops tried to grab him. And then the line sort of went, <laughs> right? That's that's exactly what they do. Is they sort of break ranks, they encircle, they grab, they pull them back, and then they disappear them into the crowd. Yeah, give me a second. That's that's the process by which that occurs. Is you can you can sort of watch at the beginning. The cops will have they will be grabbing someone. Hey, Viva. They kind of do, Rumble. They kind of do. Um, the protesters will reach out. They will grab the person trying to be arrested, that they are trying to arrest. They will yank them out of the hands of the cops, basically, at the same time pushing some backward pressure on the cops. And then the people will be sort of like tossed into the crowd behind them. And so they just sort of... Whew. So, here you go. <laughs> You see the foot go over, you see the cops, and they're gone. Right? So, and over the fence, over the rail, fucking into the crowd, and they, and you see the red hood who went out to do the initial grab, who went to break up, watch the red hood as well. Watch the red beanie, once the job is done, into the crowd. Do you rest? Yep. You, that's, that's how it works. You, you very quickly break ranks, encircle the cops, push the cops, separate them off the person, suck the people involved into the crowd, and realign your ranks. That's, that's how that works. It's just a very quick process. And so, yeah, it's a de-arrest. <coughs> so that's hot. 
<laughs> it is. It's fucking, it's, it's, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Boston on this, uh, this last Sunday. Yeah, put it at seven. Um, I thought you guys would enjoy that. Um, also douchebags not coming to my town. Um, it was an anti-fascist counter protest. Um, that's that's what it basically was is um there was a bunch of fucking chuds protesting and so it was a counter protest and the cops tried to arrest some of the counter protesters as is tradition as is tradition um and well whoopsie um uh, douchebag would be a, a fucking Travis Scott. He was scheduled to be here in Vegas. Um, he, um, yeah, the, he was supposed to be here for um, day in Vegas, I think. Date of yeah, day in Vegas, I think, is the event. Um, and people are like, yeah, we don't want him here. Like. It's not a thing. Um, so yeah, he's he um, <clears throat> yeah, he's not welcome here either. <laughs> Vegas told him to fuck off. <laughs> it's basically how it worked. Vegas basically told him to fuck off. Like, homie, no, we don't want people who incite riots here. So, um. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's a free speech. Free. Yeah, um, convention and um, event uh, permits <laughs> are, are a thing in Las Vegas. Um, oh, New York Times, lovely. Um, that means it's fucking, hang on, let me try and pull it this way. Okay, so I won't be able to put this on screen, screen, but oh, fucking. Okay, so can the New York Times just fuck off and die already? All of their shit is gated these days. It's fucking a pain in the ass to use. Anything that gets published via there is just a fucking absolute garbage nightmare to fucking access. Can the New York Times just absolutely fuck off? Um, just, just, you know. Who owns them these days? I forget who owns them these days. Um, either way. 60 criminal cases are being thrown out because of three detectives' misconduct in Queens. Um, the Queens DA uh, asked a judge Monday to toss out... Thank you. Um, thank you for the raid, Shiloh. Uh, we're just talking about a, sh a, th uh, pair, uh, a trio of shit cops in Queens um, that the Queens DA is having to toss 60 criminal cases. Um because the uh, three former New York police detectives were convicted of perjury, sexual assault, or and or official misconduct across the three of them. Um, and so they had served as essential witnesses in these six standing 60 cases. And so the 60 cases had to go bye bye. Um, always adorable. Always the best people. Um, how was your stream? What did y'all get up to? We're just sort of getting warmed up and started here. We were just having a goofball time there for a minute, but we've started to get into headlines. Um, let's see. Hey, Russell. I know that name. Um, boom. boom. All right, cool. Oh. Jesus. I hope you're not familiar. Um, and in the holy shit, somebody's being held accountable category of news headlines. Um, the two former Oklahoma police officers who used 
used their tasers over 50 times on an unarmed man who, of course, died. They used their fucking tasers over 50 times. Of course he had a heart attack. Of course he had a heart attack. Um, they've been convicted of second degree murder. Like, holy shit, man. I, 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 caboose, that is true. That is true. I saw that, that listing. That's not the one I have though. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, police, they were instructed that the use of tasers should be limited to 15 seconds at most. Um, the victim's exposure exceeded three minutes. Um, they, they just, I mean, Jesus Christ, they just, like, seriously, he was hospitalized and died in custody two days later. Um, yeah. Um, less than lethal. I'm pretty sure uh, tasers are less than lethal. Less than lethal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just checked. Yeah, they're, they're classified as a less than lethal. Um, well, there's, there's, I mean, there are such things as non-lethal caboose we just don't use any of them <laughs> everything we do is less than lethal or lethal <laughs> just... that's just how the u.s rolls um we we are not um <clears throat> you know as the the mitchell and webb ske sketch goes you know are we the baddies yes motherfucker we're the baddies thanks for paying attention um but yeah, every, everything we do is less than lethal or just straight up lethal. Um, and I know everybody. Okay. So look, I say everybody. Um, but if you haven't seen this by now, look, I, this, this made the rounds. It made the rounds on our server. This is a Trump endorsed Pennsylvania senator, senatorial candidate, Sean Parnell. It used to be, you know, women were attracted to your strength because you could defend them from dinosaurs. Pookie. Sean. Boo-boo. I don't, I like Caboose's take. Like, bitch, have you seen a fucking T-Rex? I ain't fighting that shit. You're on your own. Um, yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like, okay, so there's like, what? 250 million years difference between dinosaurs and us? Okay, f set that aside. Who's defending <laughs> against a dinosaur, right? Like, legitimately, like, you're on your own. That shit, like, you know, yeah. Earth is 6,000 years old. Yes, uh, that's, oh, God. Is he is he a young Earther? Is he a young Earther? Let's look that up, actually. Oh. <laughs> this is no, uh, Desden Nova's. Uh, I'll fight one of those little ones that bark at you if it's bigger than that. You're shit out of luck. Um... Oh, he's 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 the one who's also been accused of beating his um his estranged wife. Um <sighs> Yep, he's a young earther. He's a young earther. Only God knows. Okay, so when he was asked fucking this question, only God knows uh, how old the earth is. 6,000. Uh, oh, oh, when asked if it was, which was more accurate, 6,000 or 6 billion years, he said, only God knows.
He's a young earther. So, yeah, that tracks then. Um, no, I didn't rumble. Um, Alaska's ex-governor's name is Sean Parnell as well, right-wing piece of shit. Yeah, in other words, a young earther. Yeah, he he's legitimately like, oh, well, you know, fucking... Um, oh, it's rare I get to do this, right? It's rare I get to say something nice about Hassan. Hassan raised 126000 for strike funds in one day. In one day. Using union merch. Granted, some people were being charged $73 for a t-shirt, but it was going to a good cause. So, well, we'll write that off, right? He used only union-produced merch. And he did $126,000 uh, $26, in one day for strike funds. So, credit where credit's due. Hassan using his platform for good. We should praise him for these things <laughs> as we shit him, shit on him for all the other stuff. Right? Like, we, you know, but when somebody does good, you know, you got a positive reinforcement. Right? So, Katie, thank you to follow. Um, so, like, good on Hassan. Good usage of his platform. Good, you know, good. Good job for once. Good job. <laughs> you know, but yeah, he, he, he raised 126K in one day from a merch drop. So, and it's all going to strike funds. It's not like he needs to fucking skim off the top. Uh, There's <laughs> no way I can't. I can't. I can't fucking twist the knife. Like, I can't. I, I can't not do it. Right? It's fucking Hassan. Um, but it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Um, oh, are there any other headlines? Oh, I kind of wanted to talk about this just because this is fucking stupid as shit. And... Metallurgist admits faking steel test results for U.S. Navy subs. Right? Like, this is, this is kind of, <laughs> like, it's kind of insane. Um, when confronted with the falsified results, Ms. Thomas suggested that in some cases she gave metal positive results because she thought it was stupid that the Navy required the test to be conducted at negative 70 degrees Celsius, which would be negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, a lawyer for her said that she admitted uh, in a statement filed that she took shortcuts and made material misrepresentations, that she never intended to compromise the integrity of any material and is gratified that the government's testing does not suggest that the structural integrity of any submarine was in fact compromised due to her actions. The offense is unique in that it was neither motivated by greed nor any desire for personal enrichment. She regrets that she failed to follow her moral compass. No, 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 no. She followed her moral compass. That's the problem. She literally stated she thought it was stupid that these tests were required to be conducted in the manner that they were. She followed her moral compass. That's the problem. Um, admitting to false statements is hardly how she envisioned living out her retirement years. Uh. Oh yeah, Viva, there's been a few incidents of that. There's been a few times that's happened. It's fucking nightmarish. Um Yeah, like it just it was Look. Military bad. Military industrial complex bad. Warfare bad. Dra uh, poverty draft bad all right we've got all that out of the way hey bitch don't compromise our submarines <laughs> like what the fuck man what the fuck talk about shit there are going to be human beings in a metal tube that are going to dive down hundreds and hundreds who knows fucking i i don't know the 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 crush depth of some of these subs right hundreds and hundreds of meters in depth right 
and like potential metallurgical failures of a hull of a sub is a nightmare scenario. Like that's that that that's holy shit, man. <laughs> right? Like that's that's all the other shit aside. Uh, none of that shit should exist. None of that shit should even be a thing. But it does. Um, crush depth for most subs is classified, but it's 400 plus meters. Thank you. Thank you, Des. Um, like, yeah, sure. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. There's human beings in that thing. <laughs> Can we not have it all of a sudden just go, eh, Holy shit, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't fucking imagine what's going through your fucking head when you falsify those results. Ah, it'll be fine. No. <laughs> if anything, I'd run the test at a, like a, a steeper rate. Oh, they wanted it at 100 degrees, uh, a negative 100 degrees. I want to run it at a negative 110 just to make sure, <laughs> right? Just to, just to like give them a buffer, right? I, 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 I just, I couldn't imagine the, the just nightmare scenario that like they're saying it's fine, but, um, Okay, so I already just got done bitching about fucking New York Times, like, in all of their gated bullshit, Viva. Um, <laughs> hey, Yogi. Um, imagine reading that when you're hot bunking, uh, you're a hot bunking sonar operator in a boom, uh, in a boomer. Uh, radiation leaks are real. Like, I, I... Um, oh. yeah, fucking fuck the New York Times. Um, all right. Give me one second here. Okay, cool. All right, give me a sec here. Um, let me customize some of this shit. Uh, filters list. My filters. And let's kill that JavaScript as well. And let us see how this works. <laughs> nope. Uh, but inspect. the New York Times. I legitimately hate the New York Times. Um, I did know that about the active sonar. Um, was that, I mean, how recently? Because I know, like, uh, one of the hilarious ones is San Francisco, right? But that's been a number of years. Where did they fucking bump into recent, like, very recently? Um, can't. Because I remember when they fucking beached a submarine in San Francisco. That was brilliant. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Active sonar is a nightmare for fucking marine life. It's an absolute nightmare for marine life. Um, the... 
this is completely off topic and this is like I I just this just made me giggle. This just made me giggle. And so like I'm sharing it. Right? Taking care of your sick friend. Girlfriend, here I've brought you some oranges. Get well soon, sweetie. Thanks, teddy bear. What would I do without you? Friends, we chipped in with the guys. You get well, bro. Thanks, guys. Best friends. Requiem Eternum Donae Domini et Lux Perpetua Lucia des Requisitant Requisitant in Passe Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather here this day to remember the precious life. I'm still alive, you idiots! I fucking I, I something about this just tickled the fuck out of me though. <laughs> it's like, you know, here's your here's your partner, here's your friends, here's the best friends. <laughs> Already holding the fucking, like, mass for you and shit. You're dead, right? You're dead? You gonna die? Uh, I just... That one got me. Um, Ray, I feel that on a deep level. Um, I didn't know about this one. Good to know. I'm going to look at this in a second. Um, speaking of off topic, I just got 2000 points. I got the skirt swish notification and it reminded me of the folks in Scotland who are pissed about Scottish people wearing skirts. Like what the fuck? There's people in Scotland pissed about people wearing kilts, skirts. Um, Okay. I, 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 they're not though, Amorous. They're not. They're uh, look. I know there's some f like difference as far as tailoring goes, but let's be honest with ourselves. They're not. The name is different. Owned a lip. Um, okay, so a Seawolf class fucking fast attack hit an unidentified object in international waters in the South China Sea, resulting in moderate to minor injuries. They didn't specify how damaged the vessel was, but it managed to get under its own power to Guam, traveling on ocean surface. Not a great look. Um... It grounded on an uncharted seamount. There's a fucking hill. There's a fucking sand hill or some shit in the ocean. And one of our most advanced nuclear submarines fucking just went dunk. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Nah, we're doing fine, folks. We're doing fine. Um... Oh, this video. Okay, so don't at me. All right, we're going to watch this video. This fucking video. I wish this thing didn't have the fucking top on it. I wish I had just the fucking bottom. Because it's going to... It's Dude, this is... This is going to... You know what's up because of this fucking bullshit somebody has put on top of this banner. All right? Uh, on top of this video. Ugh. But, look, I talk shit about all of the Abrahamic stuff. I talk about, sh I talk shit about the Buddhists. I talk shit about all of the, like, wacky fucking religious bullshit, all right? This is, this is wacky religious bullshit. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be ruined by this fucking top banner. This message very, very clear. Of course, it's all sin, it's all haram, none of it is good and accepted. But for the sake of understanding, because many of us, well, we see a brother that's selling drugs, we see a brother that maybe murdered another brother, and we say, Fah, look at these people, look how rubbish they are. Habibi, let me tell you something in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As far as sin is concerned, yeah? The one that sells drugs, good or bad? Just very quickly, good or bad? Bad. How about the murderer? How about the one who commits adultery, zina? What about the one who rapes a child? What about the one who drinks alcohol? 
What about the one who does the biggest of the kabair, good or bad? This person, one person that commits all of these sins, he commits all of these sins on a daily basis, but he prays is better in the eyes of Allah than the one that doesn't commit any of these sins, but doesn't pray. Fuck your God. Right? Like, fuck your God. F fuck your God. Right? If your God is like, look, you need to, you need to talk to me multiple times a day. Look, I, I, I know there's somebody out there like raping kids and murdering and shit like that. But I mean, really, he talks to me and I'm a jealous God. And, you know, I'm high maintenance. And if you're not talking to me multiple times a day, then really, really, I, it, it, it bothers me. It, it upsets me, bro. You got to tell me what's going on with your day. The basis of all good relationships is communication. It's the cornerstone, right? I can, I can overlook you're raping those children and murdering your brother and, you know, stabbing your, your mother in the face. If you just talk to me, man, you got to talk to me. What the fuck is wrong with that God? Holy fuck, man. Jesus goddamn Christ, right? Like, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. If that's God, fuck God. He's shibboleth. <laughs> Jesus on a bicycle. Uh, excuse me, bro. <laughs> Look, I killed all those natives in the forest, but it's okay. Because I preached Islam while I was doing it. Yeah. Uh, well, you not you don't you gotta not just preach. You gotta pray. Gotta pray. Um, yeah, I I I like I came across that. I'm like, Jesus goddamn Christ, some of this shit is insane. Um I remove his babysitting privileges. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? Okay, so on the list of people, I want to just not be a thing. Can 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 fucking Dennis Prager just not be a thing? Because that'd be great. That'd be a fucking great day. Because he said this stupid shit. During the AIDS crisis, can you imagine if gay men and intravenous drug users had been the pariahs the way the non-vaccinated are? But it would have been inconceivable. You bad faith lying little piece of shit. You lived through the AIDS crisis. You utter fucking piece of shit. You utter fucking piece of shit. He was alive for it. And I guarantee he was rooting for that number to climb as high as it could get. Cupcake, I think he's doing it on purpose. I don't think he's out of touch. I think it's bad faith. I think it's 100% bad faith. He was alive during that shit. He knows what was up. He's literally just stirring the pot. Fuck that guy. Oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, Eldritch Dennis. Oh. Um, I don't think I'm on whatever server that's on for Tuse, or it's just fucking. Um. Dirtling, you need you need context for why Dennis Prager is like fuck Dennis Prager. He he said that the unvaccinated are being more uh, being mistreated more and are more of pariahs than the uh, than gay men and intravenous drug users were during the AIDS crisis. Could you imagine if we treated gay men the way we were treating unvaccinated people at the height of the AIDS crisis? Fuck that guy. He's arguing in bad faith. Um. Yeah, we treated them way, way worse. Yeah, I, I, mm. <laughs> Paul 
drugs. Um, Rumble, I'm, God, dude, yeah. Like, fuck that guy. That, when I saw that, like, as a gay man, like, I, I was, I was pissed. I was pissed. Like, TOS, 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 TOS. I was pissed. I was like, oh, this motherfucker right here. This motherfucker right here. Fucking catch, catch him slipping. Um... Yeah, we do a little TOS here. Uh, I, 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 yeah, right? Like, I, I legitimately, like, fuck you, man. Fuck you. Alan Turing, uh, chemically castrated. Um, but he, yeah, it was, ended up like just the ostracization, the, the chemical changes, the fucking depression that resulted. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Caboose. Uh. He did. He he was instrumental. Um I think <clears throat> I think the fucking British I like the British government needs to keep his fucking mouth out of, uh, his name out of their mouth. Like, every time I see, like, oh, they they erected a statue in his honor. You know what? No. No. If the people want to build a statue to Turing, let the people build a statue to Turing. The official government of, of Britain and of the UK needs to keep Alan Turing's name out of their fucking mouths. Right? Like, I'm, I'm I, mm, yeah, I'm in that camp. It's like, you know what? How about you guys don't bring this up for a little bit? Still kind of sore subject. Um, oh yeah, Ray, for sure. Yeah. Just recently we were allowed to donate blood again. Caboose. I mean, you know who Alan Turing was and his contributions to World War II, right? Um, if you know that, then, um, we can build off of that. He, he basically, um, yes, he, he was, a, he was a computer scientist, a logician, um, and a mathematical genius, um, and a crypto, uh, a, a crypto an uh, analyst. Um, <clears throat> he was gay. He was, he was an absolute rain man. Yeah, he was gay. Um, yes. And it was illegal to be gay. So the British government um, forced him to be chemically castrated. And the sort of long and short of this process, the, yeah, after the war, after they got the best years out of him, after they got what they needed out of him, by the way. Yes, that is a good point. Fatal. That is a very good point to, to make. They fucked him over after they were done using him. Okay, just that's 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 an important thing to note. It really is. They got everything they needed from the man, then they fucked him over. Right? Um they chemically they forced him to be chemically castrated. They drug him they drug his name through the mud. They publicly humiliated him. Um and in the end well I've heard mixed stories on this, to be perfectly honest. Um, I've heard mixed stories on this, but in the end, he took his own life. Um, yeah, Caboose, it's not really within the scope of a programming class. Um, it, I... I The, the suicide is questioned. Know this. That's that um, there's a professor, Jack Copeland, who has literally questioned the evidence presented. Um, he's argued that it may have been an accident. Um, 
he he may have died of accidental cyanide poisoning due to some of the uh, um. Let me just find it really quickly, because his argument is nuanced. Turing had cyanide in his house for chemical experiments he conducted in a tiny spare room. The nightmare room, by the way. He, he dubbed that room. Um, he was using, he was electrolyzing solutions of the cyanide and electroplating spoons with gold amongst other things. Um, and so it is entirely possible that what his mother suggested as the possibility of what had occurred, he had a, he had a nightly apple. He had a daily apple. This man literally ate an apple a day. Um, and it is entirely possible that he either came into accidental contact of the cyanide, he inhaled cyanide vapors in the room, or he intentionally killed himself because of what he was put through by his government and his countrymen. All, all, all are in possible. And there's even, um, Andrew, uh, Andrew Hodges, um, who wrote what is considered an authoritative biography on Turing, um, who suggested? Who suggests that the experiments were actually a ruse to disguise the suicide? Because the scenario put forth a, dis a disguised suicide hidden in a veil of uh, accidental experimentation gone wrong had been mentioned by Turing to a uh, to a friend in the past. Um. So there's a few possibilities at work here. Um, I've never seen anything because suicide was just as bad for Tus. Suicide was looked upon as a mortal sin, worse than worse than the homosexuality in some people's eyes. So, yeah. So, there's reason to. There's logic behind it. Um, but, yeah. It, it's... Cupcake, I would think so too. Which is why I usually just go with he committed suicide. That is the most likely cause of death for Alan Turing. Given what he suffered through, given what he had to endure at the hands of, as I said, his government and his countrymen. Um... Yeah, especially with the chemical castration, this wasn't an era where they understood hormonal balances. He enacted a suicide against, he took his own life. There you go. Take, 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 take your fucking pick on the verbiage. Um, they didn't understand hormonal balances at all, at all. Um, you threw, you throw in all of that other shit on top of fucking like really, really like, like brutally fucking with his hormone, uh, hormone levels on top of everything else the man endured. <sighs> I can imagine what the clinical depression looked like. It was, it was rough. I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at all that he took his own life. So, um, hey, me, Trey. Uh, um, how'd your stream go? 
He was an absolute legend, completely betrayed by his own people, and now we get we've got Elon Stance. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, there you go, Caboose. Alan Turing. Um, it's this is why I say that like the the British government should just like keep their fuck keep his name out of their mouth. Like the the Brits in general, like I almost feel like the rest of the world should adopt Alan Turing and build statues to him. And just like, look, the UK, keep Alan Turing's name out of your fucking mouths for a while. Like wait a hundred years or something like that and we'll revisit the topic. But until then, like it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. Um, yep. Rex, 100%. Oh, um, Fatal. I was around for Aaron. I'm of that era. I'm a Redditor. Um, yeah, that one... That one's a little close to home. Um, Red Fox 8 by George Saunders and my dad's poetry. That's nice, me, Trey. That's lovely. Yeah, the whole world does fucking owe Alan Turing. They really do. Ugh. Yep. I miss Aaron. <sighs> and now we have fucking douchebag McGee at the helm. Sorry, if you're not a Redditor, I'm just like glossing over names. And fuck yeah, I'm just... See, if you are a Redditor, and in reference to, like, Aaron, now we have douchebag McGee at the helm. Like, if you are if you are an old school Redditor, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> like, that's fucking... Fuck him. Fuck. I love that he had to turn notifications off on that account permanently. Because everybody would just tag him constantly. Fuck you, Spez. Fuck you, man. Oh. Fucking absolutely ruined everything that 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 Aaron worked for and towards. Ugh. Yep. Fuck Spez. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> fucking dumbass, greedy tech bro, motherfucking piece of shit. I I hope there's an afterlife just so Aaron can slap the ever loving shit out of him when he sees him again. <sighs> um. That's a rough one. Um, all right. Let's see. Oh, why is that? There we go. Six, three. All right. Uh, we're going to have to do some theory at some point because I want, I'm going to keep fucking chugging through this fucking series. Um, we're going to do six chapter six, section three tonight, which is kind of long. Um, it's a couple few pages. Um, it's entitled, but surely market forces will stop abuse abuses by the rich. Um, so we're going to have to do that eventually. Uh, let's see. Oh, <sighs> I don't, which one, Kez? Oh, I, 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 I despise editing. I despise video editing. Um, it's absolutely fucking such a pain in the ass to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. The new free market capitalist on Discord disappeared quickly from the arena. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Emrys, I saw that you 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 put it to him a little bit. Just just barely. Just barely put it to him. Uh, economist, if you sit on your hand before wanking, it feels like the invisible hand is jerking you off. Um It's like I said, barely put it to him. But I mean I'm okay with us as a community being hostile towards ANCAPs, right? Like we, I'm, I'm, f look, 
I think like um can't never confirmed. Um I I I yeah, like I don't I don't mind. I don't mind. Right? Like right wingers, libertarians, even tankies, though the tankies violate TOS like that. You can't you can't keep around for more than 30 seconds. The tankies just instantly are violating TOS. They're insane. Um but like I'm okay with like us building bridges with everyone except the end caps. I, 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 I see it as like a violation of the anarchistic principles for them to claim that they're anarchists. Like, look, okay, you're a fucking fascist or you're fucking authoritarian or you're a liberal, which is just another form of fucking bullshit soft authoritarianism, right? Like, you're these things, but we can have the conversation, right? It, at least in those instances, there's a chance of good faith. There's a chance. In the instance of an so-called ANCAP, they lie to you upon first meeting. The very first thing they do, they shake your hand and fucking look in your face and lie to you. It's like, how do you build a relationship out of that? You're not a fucking anarchist. Right? Like, you're, you're using a bad faith. We have covered this extensively at this point. It is literally bad faith. Hayek von, Mises, von Mises, Rothbard, fucking Nozick, Hoppe, dude, all of this shit is done in bad faith. They literally argue from a non-empirical standpoint. There's no amount of evidence, there's no amount of real-world experience that can ever be used to contradict our theory. So you have to then spend fucking 10 hours contradicting their theory with theory. Right? Like, it's absolutely done is political cover for their shit ideology that underpins class warfare, human slavery, you fucking name it. Like, they, they, their ideology can support it. It's ridiculous. It's like, okay, fucking own up to it then. Oh, no, 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 but we're anarchists because we don't believe in the government. Yeah, that's not, that's not, it takes more than that. You fucking assholes. Yeah, so I, I, I am actually okay with us as a community being like openly hostile to ANCAPs. <laughs> Zippy, yeah, it always boils down to that's not real capitalism. It always boils down to, but that's not real capitalism. Okay, thanks. No true Scotsman, no true Scotsman, no true Scotsman. Got it. Um, well, can't, can't. Have you ever seen the libertarian experiment in New Hampshire? Destroyed by bears. Oh, oh God. Oh God. We've had more good faith conservatives and we've had good faith ANCAPs, 100%. Um, hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, this is hilarious. Oh, it's, uh, oh God. It's, I, I, can't I heard about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bears, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fucking with you. Bears. This is the funniest goddamn story. Um, It is the, okay, so the Freetown Project or the free, what became the Free State Project. It is. It's fucking hilarious. The whole thing. Here's, here's the long and short of it. All right. Here's the long and short of it. A bunch of fucking libertarians try and take over a small town in New Hampshire. All right. They do the libertarian thing. Nobody wants to work communally. Nobody wants to use the commons if any sort of, in any sort of conceptualiz conceptualization. They basically go privatization everything. Nobody wants to operate a communal service. Trash starts piling up. Bears invade. Start tearing down tents. Start uh, knocking down doors. It is, it is the most hilarious fucking story. They did what they do. And in the end... 
nature took its course. Oh, it is. It is. Look it. Look it up sometime. Like Kez says, there's there's books on this. It is. Oh, oh, it is. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, the right the right libertarians like congregated in New Hampshire and tried to set up. Um, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of them actively fed the bears because feeding bears never turns out badly. <laughs> Caboose. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it was it, it was act af, just. The most fucking insane shit. Um, they they sent up a tent city. Um, hundreds of people, uh, ended up there. Uh, the locals hated them, by the way. Um, wait, Kez, a libertarian walks into a bear. Is that the book you have? Yes. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock on. Um So like nobody was killed. All right. So here 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 you go. Here's a fun fucking statistic. All right. So we're talking about black bears specifically. For the non-bear experts out there, black bears are not known to be aggressive towards humans, but the bears in Grafton were different. Bears are very pro smart problem-solving animals. They can really think their way through problems, and that was what made them aggressive in Grafton. In this case, a reasonable bear would understand that there was food to be had and that it was going to be rewarded for being bolder. So they started aggressively raiding food and became less likely to run away when a human showed up. There are lots of great example in the examples in the book of bears acting in bold, unusually aggressive manners, but it culminated in 20, uh, 2012 when there was a black bear attack in the town of Grafton. That might not seem unusual, but in fact, New Hampshire had not had a black bear attack for at least 100 years leading up to that. The whole fucking state had never seen a single bear attack. And now here in Grafton, a woman was attacked in her home by a black bear. After that, a second woman was attacked. But not in Grafton, in a neighboring town. The bears learned this behavior and started spreading out. Since the book was written and published, there's been a third bear attack, also in the same little cluster in the same re little region of New Hampshire. No one's been killed as yet, but there have been some pretty serious injuries. Libertarians. <laughs> Liberta Right-wing libertarians actually created aggressive bear problems in New Hampshire where there hadn't been any for over a hundred years. Oh, geez. Okay, so that's got to be an updated edition, Kez. Ag yeah, not just aggressive bears. Aggressive black bears. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Imagine fucking up that badly. Yeah. Yeah, imagine fucking up that badly. Uh, so, yeah, for those of you who didn't know, like, yeah, yeah, it's literally a thing. Um, it has been tried. The fucking right libertarians are, they're, they're, dude, they don't, they don't know how to work communally. Night, Rumble. Um, weaponize it, weaponizing bear libertarianism. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a thing. It's a thing that happened. Um, there have been very few right libertarian, like ANCAP experiments, right? You can argue that company towns were ANCAP experiments. You can argue uh, like, but as far as like right libertarianism in America, in North America, there have been very few like 
actual experiments run. There have been tons of like anarchist communes. There have been tons of like communist communes. Like there's there there's there's very few true libertarian right wing libertarian experiments that have been run. One of the only right wing libertarian experiments that has ever been run ended up failing because they created aggressive black bears through their own negligent behavior. And the problem continues to this day. Does anybody actually live there? Does anybody know? Does anybody actually live in that space? I mean, it's between fucking, like, Croatia and Serbia. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um... No one living there. The police won't let him get anywhere to close that shit. All right. Uh, yeah. Dude, it, sincerely, like, hey, Doom. Um, yeah, sincerely, like, look up fucking a libertarian walked into a bear. It's a hilarious story of how li right-wing libertarianism, which is the foundational ideology for so-called anarcho-capitalism right it all spawns out of that right libertarianism and austrian economics which spawns right libertarianism as well so you know it's all that that thread um but yeah it's a it's a hilarious story uh <laughs> it's fucking their entire <laughs> Their entire experiment fell apart because they wouldn't work together. And their shitty behavior ended up causing aggressive wildlife to destroy their encampments. Go for it, Caboose. Yeah, Sealand was fucking interesting. Um. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, while we're shitting on these people, I might as well do some like anti ancap theory. Um. Let me turn off all the fucking notifications first, and. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do one section a day up until Thursday, and then we're not going to do any more on Friday because there's no point in sullying the holy day of bad movie night. Um, also, apparently, uh, like this week is the 14th, right? So I'm doing um, I'm doing a, a, a fucking one shot with um, Radhom apparently this weekend. Uh, that's uh, I have apparently agreed to that. Um Um, okay. Kill the alerts.
Yeah, it was built on public money, but it was abandoned also, so. Um, all right. Squatting is practice. Oh. Do you have a flag? Uh, all right. Let's get this session knocked. Uh, this section knocked out. It's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be a bit. It's a few pages. Uh, Viva, don't open that. Don't ask that in open chat. The fucking the German government will fucking come down on you. Um, also, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, all right. Although I could probably get some anarchist there to marry me for free. Um, all right. Let's see. <clears throat> I don't think so. Ooh, Portuguese citizenship. Hey, Doom, how's Portugal's healthcare system? <laughs> Fucking, well, I'm shopping citizenships here. Uh, Germany's a stronger economy, though. They could probably support a better healthcare system. Hmm. I can offer mountains, no sea. I'm okay with that, Amaris. S Swiss, the Swiss have some baller healthcare. That is true, Cupcake. Um, That is true. Yeah. As long as their healthcare system is solid. Oh, it's a privatized nightmare? Yeah. All right, well, Amaris is out. Who who else wants to marry me? <laughs> who's got who's got who's got decent healthcare system that wants to marry me? Um, it's been better, but we handled the pandemic after the third wave after the third wave very well. We're currently top one double vaccinated country in the world. Um, second single vaccinated, and currently the lowest death rates and infection rates in Europe. So yeah, pretty good. For two, says, <sighs> I volunteer as tribute. Hey, you know what? France is pretty based. Um, Kaiser, fuck yeah. I'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, Austria, Austria has decent healthcare, but I'm already married to a Canadian. Um, Kaiser, keep an eye on that one too. All right. Let me, let me just fucking section on. So fucking, hey, hey. I think, I think gaming the fucking um, citizenship system is a hundred percent praxis and like yeah hundred percent i mean kez we had trump <laughs> i mean we had trump <laughs> hmm interesting all right um i mean it's it's difficult to be worse than the u.s with your health care system that's all i'm saying so No. Um, no, I don't. All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Fratus, does France have, like, language requirements? Do I have to learn French to become a French citizen? Is that what, is that a thing y'all do? Because America doesn't even do that. Not that I know of. All right, cool. Well, then, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Uh, Viva la France. <laughs> That's fucking... Alright. Oh, will fucking do this shit. Um, Amorous... <laughs> what? Du fromage. Um, yeah. Um, Alright, Switzerland sucks. Switzerland's out. Um, 
Austria has language requirements. Who wants to learn Austrian? Jesus Christ. Is Austrian even a thing? Haven't y'all, like, de... I guess. Um... <laughs> Dude, you'd be, you'd be surprised. We talk German. All right, fair enough. All right, let's 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 fucking do this. <sighs> Chapter 6, Section 3. But surely market forces will stop abuses by the rich. Unlikely. The rise of corporations within America indicates exactly how well a general libertarian law code would reflect the interests of the rich and powerful. The laws recognizing corporations as legal persons were not primarily a product of the state, but of private lawyers hired by the rich, a result with which Rothbard would have no problem, as Howard Zinn notes, quote, The American Bar Association, organized by lawyers accustomed to serving the wealthy, began a national campaign of education to reverse the Supreme Court decision that companies could not be considered as a person. By 1886, the Supreme Court had accepted the argument that corporations were persons and their money was properly protected by the process clause of the 14th Amendment. The justices of the Supreme Court were not simply interpreters of the Constitution. They were men of certain backgrounds, of certain class interests. People's History of the United States, page 255. Of course, it will be argued that the Supreme Court is a monopoly, and so our analysis is flawed. In so-called anarcho-capitalism, there is no monopoly, but the corporate laws came, uh, came about because there was a demand for them. That demand would still exist in, such, in so-called anarcho-capitalism. Now, while there may be no Supreme Court, Rothbard does maintain that, quote, the basic law code would have, been, uh, would have to be agreed upon by all the judicial agencies. But he maintains that this, quote, would imply no unified legal system, even though any agencies that transgress the basic libertarian law code would be open outlaws and soon crushed. This is not apparently a monopoly. The Ethics of Liberty, page 234. So you either agree to the law code or you go out of business. And that's not a monopoly. Therefore, at least we anarchists think our comments on the Supreme Court are valid. If all the available defense firms enforce the same laws, then it can hardly be called competitive. And if this is the case, and it is, when private wealth is uncontrolled, then a police judicial complex enjoying a clientele of wealthy corporations whose motto is self-interest is hardly an innocuous social force controllable by the possibility of forming or affiliating with competing companies. This is particularly true if these companies are themselves big business and so have a large impact on the laws they are enforcing. If the law code recognizes and protects capitalist power, property, and wealth as fundamental, uh, as fundamental, any attempt to change this is initiation of force. So the power of the rich is written into the system from the start. And we should add, if there is a general libertarian law code to which all must subscribe, where does that put customer demand? If people demand a non-libertarian law code, will defense firms refuse to supply it? If so, will not new firms looking for profits spring up that will supply what is being demanded? And will that not put them in direct conflict with the existing pro-general law code ones? And will a market in law codes not just reflect economic power and wealth? David Friedman, who is, from, uh, who is for a market in law codes, argues that, quote, if almost everyone believes strongly that heroin addic addiction is so horrible that it should not be permitted anywhere under any circumstances, anarcho-capitalist institutions will produce laws against heroin. Laws are being produced on the market, and that's what the market wants. And he adds that market demands are in dollars, not votes. The legality of heroin will be determined not by how many are for or against, but how high a cost each side is willing to bear in order to get its way. Machinery of Freedom, page 127. And as the market is less than equal in terms of income and wealth, such a position will mean that the capitalist class will have a higher de effective demand than the working class and more resources to pay for any conflicts that arise. Thus, any law codes that develop will tend to reflect the interests of the wealthy, which brings us nicely on to the next problem regarding market forces. As well as the obvious influence of economic interests and differences in wealth, another problem faces the free market justice of so-called anarcho-capitalism. 
This is the general libertarian law code itself. Even if we assume that the system actually works like it should in theory, the simple fact remains that these defense companies are enforcing laws which explicitly defend capitalist property and so social relations. Capitalists own the means of production upon which they hire wage laborers to work, and this is an inequality established prior to any specific transaction in the labor market. This inequality reflects itself in terms of, of differences in power within and outside the company and in the law code of so-called anarcho-capitalism, which protects that power against the dispossessed. In other words, the law code within which the defense companies work assumes that capitalist property is legitimate and that force can legitimately used, be used to defend it. This means that, in effect, so-called anarcho-capitalism is based on, uh, upon a monopoly of law, a monopoly which explicitly exists to defend the power and capital of the wealthy. The major difference is that the agencies used to protect that wealth will be in a weaker position to act independently of their paymasters. Unlike the state... The defense firm is not remotely accountable to the general population and cannot be used to equalize even slightly the power relationships between worker and capitalist. And needless to say, it's very likely that the private police forces will give preferential treatment to their wealthier customers, what businesses do not, and that the law code will reflect the interests of their wealthier sectors of society, particularly if prosperous judges administer that code. In reality, even if not in theory. Since, in capitalist practice, the customer is always right, the best-paying customers will get their way in this society. For example, in Chapter 29 of The Machinery of Freedom, David Friedman presents an example of how a clash of different law codes could be resolved by a bargaining process. The law in question is the death penalty. This process would involve one defense firm giving a sum of money to the other for them accepting the appropriate anti- or pro-capitalist uh, capital punishment court. Friedman claims that, quote, as in any good trade, everyone gains. But this is obviously not true. Assuming the anti-capital punishment defense firm pays the pro one to accept an anti-capital punishment court, then yes, both defense firms have made money and so are happy. So are the anti-capital punishment consumers, but the pro-death penalty customers have only perhaps received a cut in their bills. Their desire to see criminals hanged, for whatever reason, has been ignored. If they were not in favor of the death penalty, they would have not subscribed to that company in the first place, after all. Friedman claims that the deal... Uh, that the deal by allowing the de anti-death penalty firm to cut its costs will ensure that it keeps its customers and even get more. But this is just an assumption. It's just as likely to lose customers to a defense firm that refuses to compromise and has the resources to back it up. Friedman's assumption that lower costs will automatically win over people's passions is unfounded as is the assumption that both firms have equal resources and bargaining power. If the pro-capital punishment firm demands more than the anti can provide and has larger weaponry and troops, then the anti-defense firm may have to agree to let the pro one have its way. So all in all, it's not clear that everyone gains. There may actually be a sizable percentage of those involved who do not gain as their uh, desire for capital punishment is traded away by those who claim they would enforce it. In other words, a system of competing law codes and privatized rights does not ensure that all consumer interests are met. Given unequal resources within a society, it's also clear that the effective demand of the parties involved to see their law codes enforced is drastically different. The wealthy head of a transnational corporation will have far more resources to, available to them to pay for his, uh, his or her laws to be enforced uh, rather than one of their employees on the assembly line. Moreover, as we argued in Chapter 3, Section 1, and will do so in Chapter 10, Section 2, the labor market is usually skewed in favor of capitalists. This means that workers have to compromise to get work, and such compromises may involve agreeing to join a specific defense firm, or not join one at all, just as workers are often forced to sign non-union contracts today in order to get work. In other words, a privatized law system is very likely to skew the enforcement of laws in line with the skewing of income and wealth in society. 
at the very least, unlike every other market, the customer is not guaranteed to get exactly what they demand simply because the product they consume is dependent on, uh, on other within the same market to ensure its supply. The unique workings of the law and defense market are such as to deny customer choice. We'll discuss other aspects of this unique market shortly. Wyke Wyke sums up by saying, quote, any judicial system is going to exist in the context of economic institutions. If there are gross inequalities of power in the economic and social domains, one has to imagine society as strangely compartmentalized in order to believe that those inequalities will fail to reflect themselves in the judicial and legal domain, and that the economically powerful will be unable to manipulate the legal and judicial system to their advantage. To abstract from such influences of context and then consider the merits of an abstract judicial system is to follow a method that's not likely to take us very far. This is, by the way, a criticism that applies to any theory that relies on a rule of law to override the tendencies inherent in a given social and economic system. For discussion of this problem... Um, uh, as it would surface in attempts to protect the environment under so-called anarcho-capitalism, there are addended, uh, a, a, there are addendums on this document. There is another reason why market forces will not stop abuses of the rich, or indeed stop the system from turning from private to public statism. This is due to the nature of the defense market. For a similar analysis of the defense market, see Tyler Cohen's Law is a Public Good, the Economy of Anarchy, in Economics and Philosophy No. 8, uh, published in 1992, pages 249 to 267, and rejoinder to David Friedman on the Economics of Anarchy in Economics and Philosophy No. 10, published 1994, pages 329 to 332. In so-called anarcho-capitalist theory, It is assumed that competing defense companies have a vested interest in peacefully settling differences between themselves by means of arbitration. In order to be competitive on the market, companies will have to be uh, have to cooperate via contractual relations. Otherwise, the high price associated with conflict will make the company uncompetitive and it'll go under. These companies that ignore decisions made in arbitration would be outlawed by others, ostracized and their rulings ignored. By this process, it is argued a system of competing defense companies will be stable and not turn into a civil war between agencies with each enforcing the interests of their clients against each other. However, there is a catch. Unlike every other market, the businesses in competition in the defense industry must cooperate with its fellows in order to provide services for its customers. They need to be able to agree to courts and judges, agree to abide by decisions and law codes and so forth. In economics, there are other more accurate terms to describe cooperative activity between companies, collusion and cartels. Collusion and cartels is where companies in a specific market agree to work with uh, work together to restrict competition and reap the benefits of monopoly power by working to achieve the same ends in partnership with one another. In other words, this means that collusion is built into this system with the necessary contractual relations between agencies in the protection market requiring that firms cooperate and by doing so to behave effectively as one large firm and so effectively resemble the state even more than they already do. Quoting Adam Smith actually seems appropriate here. People of the same trade seldom meet together even for merriment and diversion, but the conversation ends in a conspiracy against the public or in some contrivance to raise prices. Wealth of Nations, page 117. For example, when buying food, it does not matter whether the supermarkets I visit have good relations with each other. The goods I buy are independent of the relations that exist between competing companies. However, in the case of private states, this is not the case. If a specific defense company has bad relations with other companies in the market, then it's against my self-interest to subscribe to it. Why join a private state if its judgments are ignored by others and it has to resort to violence to be heard? This, as well as being potentially dangerous, will also push up the prices I have to pay. Arbitration is one of the most important services a defense firm could offer its customers, and its market share would be based upon it being able to settle interagency disputes without risk of war or uncertainty that the final outcome would be accepted by all parties. 
Therefore, the market setup within the so-called anarcho-capitalist defense market is such that private states have to cooperate with the others or go out of business fast. And this means collusion can and will take place. In other words, a system of private states will have to agree to work together in order to provide the services of law enforcement to their customers, and the result of such cooperation is the creation of a cartel. However, unlike cartels in other industries, the defense cartel would be a stable body simply because its members have to work with their competitors in order to survive. Let's look at what would happen after such a cartel is formed in a specific area and a new defense company desires to enter the market. This new company will have to work with the members of the cartel in order to provide its services to its customers. Note that so-called anarcho-capitalists already assume that they will have to subscribe to the same law code. If the new defense firm tries to undercut the cartel's monopoly prices, the other companies would refuse to work with it. Having to face constant conflict or the possibility of conflict, seeing its decisions being ignored by other agencies and being uncertain what, um, what the results of a dispute would be, few would patronize the new defense company. A new company's prices would go up, so face either folding or joining the cartel. Unlike every other market, if a defense company does not have friendly cooperative relations with other firms in the same industries, then it would quickly go out of business. This means that the firms that are cooperating have but to agree not to deal with the new firms which are attempting to undermine the cartel in order for them to fail. A cartel-busting firm goes out of business in the same way an outlaw one does. The higher costs associated with having to solve all of its conflicts by force, not arbitration, increases its production costs much higher than the competitors, and the firm faces insurmountable difficulties selling its, profits, its products at a profit, ignoring any drop of demand due to fears of conflict by actual and potential customers. Even if we assume that many people will happily join the new firm in spite of the dangers to protect themselves against the cartel and its taxation, i.e. monopoly profits, enough will remain members of the cartel. Perhaps they will be fired if they change. Perhaps they dislike change and think the extra money is worth peace. Perhaps they fear that by joining the new company, their peace will be disrupted or the outcomes of their problems with others too unsure to be worth it. Perhaps they're shareholders and want to maintain their income. So... That cooperation will still be needed and conflict unprofitable and dangerous. And as the cartel will have more resources than the new firm, it could usually hold out longer than the new firm could. In effect, breaking the cartel may take the form of an armed revolution as it would with any other state. The forces that break up cartels and monopolies in other industries such as free entry Although, of course, the defense market will be subject to um, algolopistic oh, uh, tendencies as any other, and this will create barriers to entry, do not work here. And so new firms will have to cooperate or lose market share and or profits. This means that defense companies will reap monopoly profits and, more importantly, have a monopoly of force over a given area. Hence, a monopoly of private states will develop in addition to the existing monopoly of law and this de facto monopoly of force over a given area, i.e. some kind of public state run by shareholders. New companies attempting to enter the defense industry will have to work with the existing cartel in order to provide the services it offers to its customers. The cartel would be in a dominant position and new entries into the market either become part of it or it fails. This is exactly the position with the state with private agencies free to operate as long as they work to the state's guidelines, as with the monopolist to general, general libertarian law code. If you don't toe the line, you go out of business. It's also likely that a multitude of cartels would develop within a given cartel operating in a given locality. This is because law enforcement would be localized in given areas as most crime occurs where the criminal lives. Few criminals would live in New York and commit crimes in Portland. However, as defense companies have to cooperate to provide their services, so would the cartels. Few people live all of their lives in one area, and so firms from different cartels would come into contact, so forming a cartel of cartels. 
A cartel of cartels may perhaps be less powerful than a local cartel, but it would still be required, and for exactly the same reason a local one is. Therefore, so-called anarcho-capitalism would, like actually existing capitalism, be marked by a series of public states covering given areas, coordinated by larger states at higher levels. Such a setup would parallel the United States in many ways, except it would be run directly by shareholders without the sham of democratic elections. Moreover, as in the United States and other states, there will still be a monopoly of rules and law, the general libertarian law code. So so-called anarcho-capitalists claim that this will not occur but that the cooperation needed to provide the service of law enforcement will somehow not turn into collusion between companies. However, they are quick to argue that renegade agencies, for example, the so-called mafia problem, or those who reject judgments, will go out of business because of the higher costs associated with conflict and not arbitration. However, these higher costs are insured because the firms in question do not cooperate with others. If other agencies boycott a firm, uh, if, uh, if other agencies boycott a firm but cooperate with all of the others, then the boycotted firm will be at the same disadvantage, regardless of whether it's a cartel buster or a renegade. The so-called anarcho-capitalist is trying to have it both ways. If the punishment of non-conforming firms cannot occur, then so-called anarcho-capitalism will turn into a war of all against all, or at the very least, the service of social peace and law enforcement cannot be provided. If firms can't deter others from disrupting the social peace, one service the firm provides, then so-called anarcho-capitalism is not stable and will not remain orderly as agencies develop which favor the interests of their own customers and enforce their own law codes at the expense of others. If collusion cannot occur or it's too costly, then neither can the punishment of non-conforming firms and so-called anarcho-capitalism will then again prove to be unstable. So to sum up, the defense market of private states has powerful forces within it to turn it into a monopoly of force over a given area. From a privately chosen monopoly of force over a specific area, privately owned area, the market of private states turns into a monopoly of force over a general area. This is due to the need for peaceful relations between companies, relations which are required for a firm to secure market share. The unique market forces that exist within this market ensure collusion and monopoly. In other words, the system of private states will become a cartel and so a public state, unaccountable to all but its shareholders, a state of the wealthy, by the wealthy, for the wealthy. All right, I'm just going to assume the bot is not responding again, and it's going to kick off the fucking clip location here in a second. Um, thank you for putting up with the reading. <laughs> Some of you are here for it. Um, all right, let me re-enable all the alerts. No, that one stays off. Okay, cool. It just processed. Um, hosts re-enabled. Oh, re-enabled and re-enabled. And the actual word itself. Yes, exactly, Viva. Like, I, I'm not kidding you. And caps recreate the state with extra steps. Um, it is, it is absolutely hilarious. Uh, and, and they recreate the state with extra steps and then it's even more, uh, um, operable for the wealthy. It is, imagine taking the shit we have now and then retooling it to work even more so for the wealthy. Like, that's what they're advocating for at the end of the day. It is astounding to fucking talk to these people. But, but they actually think they're anarchists. This is, this, is, this is the thing that drives me insane. 
is they they actually think they're anarchists. Um, and then channel. Uh, that one. Why? Why is it not? There we go. Um, all right, let me get this up a little bit. I mean, yeah, a fucking history book would do these people good. Like any, any history book of like labor relations and, um, labor action in the U S definitely do them a lot of good. Uh, six, three, there we go. Get this fucker uploaded. Um, and recorded. Do it on that. Publish. There we go. A book of how not to fuck off, uh, fuck off bears would also be handy. <clears throat> I, I, how not to be unbearable. <laughs> oh, wrong one. There you go. Um. Um. Yeah, so we're up to like seven hours. We're coming up on seven hours in that playlist. That's that there's there's I think just just under seven hours worth of no and caps aren't anarchists. <laughs> everything they believe, everything they advocate for runs contradictory to anarchist philosophy. The only thing they are is I don't like government telling me what to do. Nice, Fratus. That's fucking praxis right there. That's fucking praxis. For real. I mean, I don't know why anybody want to come here, but, like, trust me, I, you know. I mean, I suppose if you're escaping some, like, fucking absolute hellhole, it's worth doing. Um, but <clears throat> um, oh, there's there's a couple of graphic people. There's oh, and like I think skeptic may enjoy this as well. We'll see. Here, here is there's a couple errors that have been pointed out on this map, and if you want the link to it, I'll get you the fucking link to it. Um. Here is a topologist's map of the world. This is borders and nothing else. This is this is topological border. Uh, uh, this is a topological border map. There are some a couple of people point out there's a couple of minor errors. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know many pelicans. I can't speak on them. But if you want the map, there's the link to the download. Yeah, borders are fucking stupid as shit, man. Fucking, look, the natural borders, the shit, I'm fine with. You know, unless we want to conduct massive geoengineering. Um, look, I, I drew an imaginary line on the ground. If you cross, I'm going to shoot you in the face. That's what borders are. 
Yeah, I, I know there's people starving to death on the other side of my imaginary line, but they don't matter because they're on the other side of my imaginary line. Like, borders are fucking stupid. They're, they're super fucking cringe. Yeah, not a fan. And economically, they're fucking counterproductive as well. I have, I have an entire book with so many sources in it. I, for two, I know about that. I actually know about that one. That and um, what's the other one that fucking Germany wanted to do? Fucking the, the having to do with the Mediterranean. Was it drain the Mediterranean? I think so. <clears throat> There's a few of those like weirdo fucking plans. Um, yeah, and, and, um, yeah, dry up the Mediterranean. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, there's a few of those. The, the fucking, it's always Germans, by the way. Oh, Bree, Bree the Mumble Bee. Did you bring enough for the entire class? <laughs> uh, Viva, wait, what did we do? What did we do? Um, Uh, caboose who knows what it would do um it's not even your imaginary line it's the imaginary line decided by somebody 2,000 miles away from the line and people who live near the line are required to shoot their neighbors for crossing so it is true um yeah no um and like i said i have a i have an entire book dedicated to the concept of open borders yeah interesting i didn't know that um I don't know why that uh, that alert didn't pop. Hang on, let me check. I just disabled a whole bunch of alerts and then re-enabled them for purposes of reading. So, uh, follows, enabled, let's test it. Uh, Nemesis, thank you for the follow. I don't know why it didn't pop. Um, everyone gets ice cream, yay! Um, well, which other countries would you be expecting to successfully drain the Mediterranean Sea? Fair fair um if if the germans said that they thought they could do it i'd i'd believe it could be done yeah there's there's a few of those countries that like it, the u.s china germany if they're like yeah we could do it I'd, I'd be like yeah it can be done then the dutch the dutch only if it involves moving land and or water if it, if it, like, rebalancing of land and water, the Dutch. Yeah, they, they definitely have a have a say. Um, oh, well, that's probably why it didn't pop, Nemesis. That's pro why it probably didn't pop. Um... Free, thank you for the following. Um, yeah, that's that's that does do fucky things with it. Um, can we just can we make him go away yet? Like, isn't that, yeah, hang on, I'm just looking it up. Like, that's the one, like, the, the, the canal to be, like, yeah, 55 or 100 kilometers, depending on the route chosen to the Mediterranean Sea to bring seawater into the area. I mean, Caboose, who the fuck knows why he'd be interested, but, I mean. Yeah, it, 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 basically, they'd get, they'd get an oasis out of it. It'd be seawater. 
that they'd get an oasis out of it. And since the area lies 60 meters below sea level, they, there's hydroelectric potential there. There's, I mean, literally kinetic potential. Um, so you could theoretically, um, like, let me check. Let me check. Isn't it? Yeah, like it would result in a hypersaline lake, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the inflowing water would then evaporate quickly because of the desert climate. This way, a continuous flow of water would be created from inflow and evapor if inflow and evaporation were balanced out. With this continually flowing water, hydroelectricity could be generated. Eventually, this would result in a hypersaline lake or a salt pan as the water evaporates and leaves the salt it contains behind. <laughs> Where is this guy from? English. English. It was first conceived by an Englishman. And then, um, Oh, this is great. This is great. This is great. This is, this is how, you know, this is how, you know, a project definitely has great credentials, right? Good Providence uh, attached to the, the credentials. Um, an Englishman, thought it could be used um n then non-egyptians <clears throat> the british um saw saw this after the first world war they they became aware of the the depression after the first world war um when Dr. John Ball, the director of the Survey of Egypt project, oversaw mapping the depression and suggested that it could be used to produce hydroelectricity and thus generate wealth for Britain. And then in 1957, the American Central Intelligence Agency proposed to Dwight Eisenhower that maybe we could achieve peace in the Middle East by flooding the depression. The resulting lagoon, according to the CIA, would have four benefits. It would be spectacular and peaceful. It could materially alter the climate in adjacent areas. It could provide work during construction and living areas after completion for the Palestinians. And it would get Egyptian President Nasser mind on other matters because he needed some way to get off the Soviet hook. So Elon Musk is interested in the project, is he? Oh, oh, but wait, Caboose, there's so much more. If you want to know how the fucking CIA and the United States government proposed to do this. Oh, oh, it's, it's great. It's great. The core problem of the, uh, of the project was cost and technical difficulty of diverting seawater to the depression. Calculations show that digging a canal or tunnel would be too expensive Demining would need to be uh, would be needed to remove bypass uh, some of the, uh, some of the millions of unexploded ordnance left over from World War II in northern Egypt. Consequently, it was suggested that the use of nuclear explosives to uh, excavate the canal. The plan called for the detonation in boreholes of 213 nuclear devices. <clears throat> yeah. Um, at the time in 1953, they would have had to evacuate at least 25,000 people from the area just 
for the basic ex uh, 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 excavation. We'll call it excavation, right? Um, excavation. Also, fun fact, the shockwaves from that explosion might also have affected the uh, tectonically unstab unstable Red Sea Rift located 450 kilometers away from the blast site. Another danger is cited as increased coast erosion because sea currents could change in such a way that very remote coastal areas could start eroding as a result. So of course, of course, Elon's attracted to it. He, I bet he thinks that his boring company could get in on it. <laughs> GL, yeah, who was that person that wanted to nuke a hurricane? Um, I bet fucking Elon's like all about like, oh, the boring company can bore this hole. It's like sixty kilometers. We can do it. We can be the contractor for this. Oh my god. Yeah, like Hyperloop in Vegas. Get paid and deliver not working shit. Yeah. His company would finish that 60 kilometers in 100 years. It took them three years to go like a quarter of a mile here in Vegas. I'm not kidding you. Like, it, it took them like three years to go like uh, literally a quarter of a mile. Uh, Bree, yes. Trump was the one. We were just playing funny time with it um but yeah oh that would be that would be a fucking thing that would be a thing fuck <laughs> in before the egyptian government gets conned by elon musk um uh, no, don't worry, Spree. No worries. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Um, yeah. In before Elon Musk cons the Egyptian government out of $250 million. Um, that's... <laughs> oh, fuck me, man. How does this motherfucker keep getting away with these fucking griffs? <laughs> hey, Ghislaine Maxwell was denied bail for the fourth time. A Vienna brothel, so if you're in the neighborhood, a Vienna brothel is offering customers, wait, 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 quote, 30 minutes with a lady of their choice in exchange for getting a COVID-19 vaccination. <laughs> Caboose, who knows? Viva, time to get another one. Um, it's not fair for the already vaccinated. Can this work retroactively for twos? Um, <laughs> I need my booster. Think that'll work? There you go. Um, I'll, I'll go up to one of the, uh, uh, facilities here in Nevada. Um, Kaiser, we are, we are, um, Remember when Elon moved himself and Tesla to Texas and conservatives were like, look at how dumb and bad California is. And California was over there laughing, going, yes, he's all yours. Enjoy, suckers. Um, it's going to take one asshole with convincing enough fake passports to suddenly make a super spreader out of this. I'll complain for dis uh, discrimination. Um, Steph, they're being compensated. <laughs> it's, uh, Yes. Fun Palace. Um, 
in exchange for a jab. Oh Jesus. Okay, so this is this is stream safe. This is stream safe. I can show you. Like the, the, they're they're literally. This is this is this is hilarious. Holy shit, Austria's going hardcore. Holy shit, Austria's going hardcore. Um, Apparently, vaccination uptakes in Austria are among the worst in Western Europe, leading the government to induce, uh, introduce tighter restrictions. Roughly 64% of Austria's population is fully vaccinated, and those who are unjabbed are now banned from visiting cafes, restaurants, and hairdressers. The 2G rule, which requires proof of vaccination or recovery from coronavirus, will be in place for hotels, cinema visits, or events for more than 25 people. There is a four-week transition period in which a vaccination plus a PCR test will then grant admission to places where the unvaccinated are banned. New rules announced on Friday. Oh, and the brothel's kind of based. Um, they're encouraging men and women to visit. Um, the reporter spoke to uh, some of the women who work at Fun Palace, um, and they think it's a great idea. So, yeah. Uh, here we have a new wave in Poland. It's not great. In the U.S., we've just been stacking waves. We've just been saying it's just one giant fucktastrophe. Um Interesting, Russ. Oh, wait, here they're start. They're starting talking about the possibility of a selective lockdown only for non-vaccinated. All right. Yeah. America is the Titanic two of COVID handling. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. It's okay. Texas, just just don't go to Texas. Texas, um, I got a warm welcome, but no coffee. <laughs> nice doom. Um, Texas accounts for like the majority of COVID deaths now. Um, I could have sworn I saw that that statistic kicking around. Hang on. Yeah, Texas unvaccinated Texans now make up a majority of COVID-19 cases this year. <laughs> nice, Doom. Um, yeah, so just avoid Texas. You'll be fine. Uh, Brie, they do, but they're very rare. They're very rare. Uh. <laughs> Open. That sounds about right. Sounds about right.
food and coffee at a brothel. Hmm. Aspen. Dick is free. Dick is free. That it. Oh, I hit Dick. Dick is free. Yeah. That's just. Yeah. Um. Fair enough, Doom. Hey, right, whatever gets you through your day. Zippy, you just got to shop around a little bit. Cycle through a few. You'll find it. There's, it's, it's not that off, uh, that awful out there. Oh yeah. Caboose for sure. Um, let's see. I'm hungry. I may, you know what? Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, where is this? England. It's fucking England, of course. All right. Um, Nice, Doom. I mean, disclaimer, I live in Las Vegas, right? Uh, basically, a woman committed suicide with her baby uh, because the DWP turned him down um, for... Oh, uh, she arrived. She had to walk eight miles. She arrived five minutes late, sanctioned for two weeks, no money for milk for the baby, jumped out of a fucking window. With the baby. Yeah. So. Uh, Doom, that's less the postpartum depression territory and more the... Um, yeah, the fuck this. Yeah. Yeah, Kez, there's, 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 somebody posted an incident going back to 2009 and uh, like incidents from recent years as well. Like it was, it's like, this isn't the first time this has happened in that neck of the woods. Like it's, it's not the first time. Yeah. So. I'm not surprised that you're desensitized to it. Sounds sounds like that's a, a regular story for y'all over there. The DWP stopped my money when I was eight and ha eight and a half months pregnant with my daughter. Took threatening legal action to fix. Uh, how's the privatization going in the UK? Uh, yeah, how's Brexit working out for y'all too? Dummy move that was. Upload finished? Upload finished. Cool. Come on. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Doom. Yeah. Food shortages, fuel shortages, driver shortages. Army folks are driving ambulances now, so that's fun. Um... Genius. Fucking genius. Um, oh, I needed to check something. Give me one sec here.
All right. Oh, well, that's the thing. Uh, hey, Gemma. We're about to just fucking wrap this up. I'm hungry and I want to make food. Um, I don't know. Yeah, we're going to do that. I'm just going to pull one, pull the trigger on that one. Um, let's go over to, go over to Australia. I'm going to fucking be hanging out with Rad Hom this weekend anyway. Um, yeah, is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm hungry. Let's fucking, I want to get, I want to get food in me. So we're going to end on that happy note, that really fucking high note. Wasn't that, wasn't that an amazingly high note to end on everybody? That was just a brilliant fucking note. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh man, that was a uh, fucking headline. Um, yeah, I got some, I got some like chicken breast ready. Um, I'm going to go like, uh, I'm probably going to play some horizon, um, horizon five. I might be in voice chat on the server. Um, so if you see me and you want to hang out and you want to talk on the, on the discord server, swing on through, uh, I may be on there. Um, but I'm going to make my food first, make cargo burr. Yeah. I like horizon. It's a good series. Um, either way, let's go say hi to rad Hom. I love car. I love good old fashioned carny trash. And he knows I love him. So catch y'all um, tomorrow. <laughs>